<sighs> so I'm sitting outside in my backyard soaking up that sweet vitamin D when I take a moment to start scrolling through my Pinterest feed. All of the sudden, <gasps> the sun becomes hotter. <sighs> Those bugs, no one ever remembers the name starts ringing. Your eyes start darting around every inch of the backyard and you scream out loud, I gotta make that! Suddenly the weird neighbor asks, What is wrong with you? Pinterest made me do it! Supposed to follow you? <laughs> I don't know how you guys watch this channel. I swear, I don't know where it comes from sometimes. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm DIY Danny, and I'm clearly crazy. <laughs> this is a place where I share my love of DIY with all of you. This is a part of a series on my channel called Pinterest Made Me Do It. A series where I take inspiration from cool trendy decor items that I've seen on Pinterest and try to recreate them. Hopefully for cheaper too. But before we get pinning, a gentle reminder to hit that subscribe button, join the family, support because I got more custom creations, DIYs, and hacks coming your way and you don't want to miss out. So without further ado, let's jump into this episode. I don't know, scroll the Pinterest page. Today's Pinterest inspiration came when I finally decided it was time to do something with my backyard. I mean, it's been three years, but let's move on. The biggest, I think, mean, push to want to do this was because I was surprising my really good friend Jess with a birthday present. Every year, we give each other an experience for our birthdays. Sometimes we go to the play, we've gone to ballet, we've travel together and this year we were gonna go to the spa together and then with COVID-19 happening and isolation we couldn't go to the spa so I thought I'm going to bring the spa to her <laughs> Magical. And don't worry, Jess was part of my 10 bubble. I don't know if it's different for everyone else, but in Canada, we have a 10 bubble where you can pick 10 people that you see consistently that are in your bubble and then like, that's it. So Jess was part of my 10. So it's all safe here, folks. We're all safe. So there were a few items from Pinterest that I was pulling my inspiration from. First Pinterest inspiration I was taking from was all these really cool vertical standing beams that acted as light posts that actually allowed you to trail outdoor lights from them. Such a cool idea for an outdoor space. I was obsessed. I didn't really care for the planters per se, but I definitely liked the inspiration of this idea. The second Pinterest project idea was looking at some really trendy, modern looking outdoor couches. There were a lot of really cool square couches out there, some made with wood, some made with metal, but what I knew was I liked a specific square shape. Very rectangular in style, very modern. I didn't, however, like the price of all of those DIY modern inspired couches. So of course we are taking inspiration from it and we are going to DIY it up. The last elements I was taking inspiration from was more about atmosphere and like general mood of a space. Here I loved these hanging china balls from the trees. I thought that looked so cool and brought a lot of texture, but also kind of like interest to a space without doing a whole lot. And then this one, I love it for all its textures and candles and faux furs to really warm the entire space up. This is what I wanted to create. I mean, that photo is a little extra. I don't think that I could actually create a space with that much stuff in it. Mostly like my pocket can't afford a space with that much stuff in it. But I can create a micro version of that and it's still going to look just as cozy, just as beautiful, and just as trendy and fun. So first things first, let's take a look at my backyard. So my backyard is actually pretty rad. One side has a bunch of grass and a small shed. The middle has a patio where a cool six seater table resides. And the third part has a pool and lounge area with a tiki hut. No, I did not make that. The house literally came with a tiki hut, but it does need to be fixed up a little. It went through a rough winter. I love it because the pool has a little lounge area at the back where right now we're housing lounger chairs, a broken umbrella, and a random table. Yep. Then there was this raised area that literally has some broken chairs, a few empty buckets, and a rustic Canadian flag that I DIY'd. Oh Canada. 
I mean, for a pretty cool backyard, it definitely was not inspiring anybody. That backyard really needed some loving real bad. Now, for this DIY adventure, I was going to focus my time and efforts down along the pool lounge area and the side area. This is where I felt I could do the most updating and make the biggest impact on a budget. I think the first thing that I need to do is get some sunscreen on, like stat. The biggest SPF I have right now is a 50 and I know that that's not gonna be enough. <laughs> first things first, I wasn't starting anything until I put sunscreen. Listen, your girl is basically see-through. If I don't put sunscreen on, I am going to be as red as this shirt. This will be me, just this on my face. This is all you'll be looking at. Okay, let's go DIY. First thing you should know that in order for me to create the proper dimensions for my couch, I kind of had to work backwards and start with cushions. The cushions then could be my guide for sizing of what I wanted my couch to be. So I did my research and and I decided to go with the Ikea set. It's called the Frozen Dove Holman. I will put it on the screen. And this size really was the best bang for my buck. A set of three cut bottom cushions and three top cushions came to a total of 255 Canadian. And although this seems really steep, no Billy you saved a buck. Why are outdoor cushions so expensive? If I knew how to sew better, I might consider to DIY it, but when it's an outdoor cushion and the way people are so tough on it, I wasn't going there. And to be honest, DIYing was probably actually going to cost just as much. I'm just happy I saved so much money on the build. Hallelujah. So starting with the cool new trendy and modern DIY couch build, I really need to find a better name for that. It was first time to get my backyard space set up to DIY outside. You know, get a little DIY workstation started. Do you guys ever do this with your extension cords, the daisy chain method? It's really handy because essentially now you can unplug the male and female side and just pull out the length that you need without actually getting your entire cord all messed up. It like always stays organized. Kinda of brilliant. I'm just saying, these chains are cool. <laughs> okay, what we got there? To build my couch, I was using a two by six and a two by four in pressure treated wood. Pressure treated wood is different from your basic building lumber. Basically, pressure treated lumber is wood that has been immersed in a liquid preservative and then placed in a pressure chamber. That chamber forces the chemicals into the wood fibers, but it's those chemicals that keep your outdoor furniture beautiful for years by resisting termites and rot and fungal decay. So if you're going to cut with this wood, just make sure you wear a mask or you build it in a well-ventilated space outside. It's just not something you want to breathe in. We're doing safety first, folks. First things first, I got all of my cut lists out of the way. If you want the full cut list and step-by-step, -step, I'll have this on my blog and I'll link it in the description box below. I also coaxed my partner in crime, Jeffrey, to help me. I told him I would make him dinner if he helped. Some of the boards were so big, I don't think I could have done it without his help. It's like when Ikea tells you that you need a buddy to do this build. This was definitely a buddy build. It was a BB build, will you? So I had all of my pieces cut. Last minute design decision. We're gonna miter the tops of the two sides of the arms so that they sit nice and flush together. We're only gonna miter here and here, yeah. Here and here. Before I was just gonna be like a butt up, but I think this is gonna look better and more professional. Miter done that from the beginning, but didn't. <laughs> As a last step, I was sealing up all of my cut edges using a cut and seal, keeping all that moisture out. Ooh, cool. How old was this tree? One, two, three, four, five. Old. The answer's old. Cleared out this entire back section. I figured, you know, work smart, not hard, and uh, build the thing where it's meant to go, which is in this back section. We're gonna build some boxes. Is it just me or is it just always start to feel like I'm just building a series of boxes on this channel? It's just one box after the other in different ways, but I'm just always building a box. Am I building a box around this channel? <sighs> Just kidding. So the afternoon went by really well. It didn't take long for the two square arm rests to come together. Then we got going on the main frame, yes another box, and we added three support beams in the middle and secured the two side arms in place. Dog's like, if I put my head near the screws, then you'll see me and pay attention to me. Are you the keeper of the screws? Nice good boy. 
So I'm gonna take one, okay? He's the biggest support dog, I'll tell ya. You guys, look at this so far. Isn't this amazing? I mean, it's a little DIY, I'm not gonna lie, but like all of this for like under a hundred dollars. I am just totally shook. <laughs> Looks so good. Like you don't even need to put cushions on them if you didn't want to. At this point, it was time to add the half inch pressure treated boards that were going to make up the bench top of this couch. We just adjusted the width that we wanted and we used a two by four as our spacer, then simply used a brad nailer to secure them into place. Oh my gosh. Oh, even from a distance, it looks good. Hey, doo -doo 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 -doo. Now that we have a bench, we have one last Pinterest inspired DIY to finish today and let it set overnight so that tomorrow it can be a thing. I got four buckets here. There's two small guys and two bigger guys. These are uh, buckets that were just like going to be recycled from the pool stuff. I decided why go buy bins when we had them here. So I'm just gonna reuse this. Upcycling. We're calling this upcycling. Not really, because no. I want to build landfill instead of recycling. That's true. And I got two bags of cement, so it's about half a bag per bucket. And then we're just gonna inset those four by fours into the bucket, brace them with some two by four, then uh, we let them dry. All right, I was moving and shaking and moving and shaking. It's time to beat me up, Scotty. Always wanted to say that. This is literally the only time I'll get to say this, so bear with me. Jeffrey came up with a brilliant idea. We're gonna pop this cement bag on top of these two buckets, and then we're gonna cut each side, and then it's just gonna evenly distribute into both the buckets. If this works, he's a genius. If it doesn't, well, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Pretty evenly split. That's like perfectly split. Brilliant. I was not taking out anger issues. I don't know if we're gonna fit it all in this bucket. So this technique worked out really well for the big buckets. The smaller ones had a little bit of a struggle, but it all worked out. It always does, folks. Just a general rule of thumb for safety, when working with cement, don't breathe it in. Do it in a well-ventilated space, and if you're not in a well-ventilated space, definitely wear a mask. After that, I poured the cement into a bucket, added water, just enough water to make it a muddy substance. You're doing a great job. Not gonna lie, this hurt my wrist a lot that day, so I just let Jeffrey do the work. A concrete plan, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Solid joke. <laughs> Good lord, I'm a rock today. My jokes are rock solid. <laughs> okay, let's move on. After that, I stuck the four x four back into the original bucket, poured the cement around the beam, and secured the beam upright using a level to guide with a two x four on each side to hold it in place. Then we just repeated this step three more times. We got four beams and cement drying. Way to go. This is what I feel like doing right now. <laughs> I'm going to uh, take five minutes, enjoy the rest of this day on this cushion. I will see you all tomorrow. Good morning, it's day two. And I'm very excited because today is the day that I'm gonna bring this whole backyard together. These guys have been drying overnight and they're looking pretty good. I mean, the concrete feels rock solid, so I'm hoping that means good things. I'm like terrified to take it off these things. I'm just gonna hold out as long as I can. And uh, this morning I didn't put this on camera, but I did fix this guy up here. I went and picked up a couple things this morning. So let's go put it all together. Also, I need to take the sweater off. What am I thinking? It's so hot. Of course, a new day meant another ridiculous amount of sunscreen. My first goal of the day was getting the entire space cleaned up and looking fresh. <laughs> Next up, I needed to get that broken umbrella out of there. Oh, Mary Poppins! <laughs> nope. Excuse me, Pep-Pep. 
after that, if you remember our Pinterest inspiration of those round paper china balls, I found some outdoor versions at Ikea for a really amazing price, so I just needed to suspend them from the tree. My goal was to give them varying heights so they would just beautifully drape over the couch. Ooh, it looks so whimsical, you know. But like with all seriousness, I loved it. It was perfect. And funny enough, I do actually end up adjusting these again later. I realized I had made them a little too high the first time. So watch out for that later in the final shots. You'll totally agree that they look so much better lower. Just took me a while to see it. You know, you sometimes you just have to step back so that you can really see it. How beautiful did that couch look with the cushions? Mwah, ah, obsessed. Perfect. I also had an old indoor jute rug that I had spilled black paint on that I felt would be great for this cozy little scene. I just flipped it over. Shh. Also dragged in my fire pit, which also acted as a wonderful coffee table. That's called multi-purpose, baby. My ideas are on fire. And there goes my subscribers. Next, I brought down my green umbrella, mostly for aesthetic, but I was trying to set a scene, okay? To bring in a little life and that summer feel, I got these two baby palms in terracotta pots for each side of the couch. I truly believe plant life can transform a space. A space will always feel more alive, more cozy if you add plants. It gives the space life. Literally. All right, texture baby, it was all about texture. If you remember from my Pinterest post, I needed pillows, I needed faux furs, I needed texture and warmth. One thing I will note is that these pillows were indoor pillows, so that meant at nighttime, I would have to bring them inside or put them in a weather safe box. I opted for indoor pillows because I was looking for something a little bit more cozy and a little bit more of a comfy texture. You know, the selections for outdoor pillows are just slim pickings out there. I couldn't find anything I liked on a short amount of time, but I will still be on the hunt. So if any of you know where you can find really great outdoor pillows that are cool and trendy and textured then let a girl know hit me up in the comment section below please I also opted to go for a little color within my pillows this was a chance to really brighten up the space and kind of give it some life I also wanted a place to hold towels, so I'm adding in this rattan basket, which was everything. To get this nice spa ready, I added in two cozy house coats and matching slippers, as well as two pool towels. I have to say the real cozy factor came through when I put on the blanket and added the faux fur on the seat. I mean, can we just climb in now? And the final touch was adding in my faux candle in this large lantern. My scene was pretty close to getting set up and it was finally time to get those beams set up. I was nervous. I had no idea if this was going to work. And if it didn't, I would have to scrap the whole thing and the space just wouldn't feel the same. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I went into this with no idea how I was going to take the bucket off. I kind of just winged it and hoped for the best. Never wing a DIY project. What was I thinking? <laughs> a good technique was to give it a good tap on the side just to loosen up the concrete from the bucket. Eventually, I was able to twist it off. Wow! That actually looks really good. Then just stood it up. It's standing on its own! Oh, that's so relieving. And remove the 2x4 brace. Bam! I don't think she's going nowhere. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, my technique. Ooh, she was still a little, uh, still a little wet. She might not make it, but we'll see. Three out of four turned out really good, and I'll take those odds. Another successful DIY. <laughs> Except this one, I think, was the one that had the littlest amount of cement in it, and it's a bit of the black sheep of the family. It seems to be balancing okay, though, but I am gonna throw a shim under there just to give it a little extra secure attack. But, uh, you know, even if I have to scrap this one, all right. Then all that was left was just to take my outdoor lights and string them across the beams. I am so thrilled those turned out okay. 
Once I got the chairs positioned up top, the whole space just really felt like it was finally coming together. And I can tell you it was a good thing because Jess was going to be there soon and I didn't have much time left. One thing to know about my friend Jess is that she is obsessed with unicorns. The unicorn obsession, it's a real thing. The internet tells me it's a real thing. And I was not going to let her down by not putting something unicorn in this space. So I decided it would be nice to give her her own personal unicorn floaty. To be honest, I usually can't have things in the pool. My dog normally makes it his personal mission to ensure that we don't have anything fun in our pools because he will destroy it. But I did it for Jess. My lungs, however, were not as happy. Not a fan of blowing those things up. It literally took forever. I just kept walking, just to keep my head from being lightheaded. And I just kept walking and blowing and walking and blowing and it didn't seem to get any bigger. Unicorn! <sighs> she better love you! The last element was just adding in these special little spa night essentials to bring the whole scene together. We had lemon and cucumber water, watermelon, cucumbers for the eyes, flowers, and of course face masks and nail stews. Whew! Everything was done, I was feeling good, and Jess was just about to arrive. It was time to show Jess her COVID safe spa night I worked so hard to create. Yeah. Welcome to your COVID safe happy birthday spa night. Ta da! What? I love it. <laughs> so, because for your birthday we were going to go to the spa, and because we can't now, I brought the spa to you. I love it. Do you? Come down, come check it out. I love it. Ooh. You have your very own robe down here and slippers to put on and there's some watermelon and Some face masks. These are cute, right? I can't believe you built this <laughs> Yeah, I could get used to this swimming. Right, isn't it good? It's amazing. And I also got you your favorite thing a unicorn Oh my god, literally my favorite creature in the whole entire world. I know. Oh my god. Can I get it in that? Yes, it's yours. We should call her Eunice. <laughs> okay, we can call her Eunice. Joe, do you want to get a robe on? Hell yeah! <laughs> Let's go do spa night. With a little Pinterest inspired magic, I was able to turn my drabby, not so pretty backyard space into a beautiful, cozy oasis that felt so good. I loved everything about this space from the cool DIY couch to the hanging china bulbs, the comfy pillows and the additional throw furs and blankets, the faux candles, And oh man, as soon as it was dark, everything just went from cozy to magical. Happy birthday! Yay. Okay. Yay. Yay. And I just thought those beam lights were so rad. It made the entire space feel more inclusive and warm. It also added a good amount of light back there, which I love too. They are so great for spaces that don't have walls to add lights to. And so it worked perfectly along that heightened area. Needless to say, Jess was thrilled. We had the best night ever after that. We swam, had tasty snacks, did face masks, and enjoyed that warm, cozy fire pit. It was just the best. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all loved this crazy DIY backyard makeover slash surprise party for my friend. I hope you also found this inspiring. If you have a loved one or friend who is celebrating something during this isolation, maybe this gives you a little bit of inspiration for something you could do for them. Let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite part, and if you got some pillow suggestions, let a girl know. I will see you all 
next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>